Hello, welcome back to Django Projects, where we're building a simple blog web app. Now, if you haven't already uh, got your uh, environment ready, um, maybe you can check out my previous video on how to install um, Python, uh, the virtual environment, and Django, and get to a point where you've created a, a new a Django project. So I'm ready to start here. Um, I have a, I have the, um, I have Python installed. Inside I've uh, installed my virtual environment, new proj, and I've created a new uh, Django project called my site. So that's currently where I am and where I'm going to start off in this video. Like I said, if you're not too sure how to get to this point, Take a look at my previous video where you can uh, install and get to this point uh, so we can start developing from this tutorial. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just make sure my uh, project is working. So uh, I need to set up the virtual environment. So I'm going to change the directory and go into my uh, virtual environment again. Uh, so Python and inside of there, I'm going to need a um, new project. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the scripts and uh, activate. So I've activated my um, virtual environment. I come out and then I'm going to go into my uh, my site which is my Django project. And here I am in my Django project. And let's just test to make sure it works. So I'm gonna run a, run a Python, uh, manage PY, and then run the server. So like I said, again, if you don't know how to do or get to this point, uh, then please just check out my previous videos. Um, there's a number of, way of different ways to kind of start a project. Um, so I'm just gonna check that that works all right. Yep, so we're ready to go and start developing. So in addition to that, um, I have uh, Visual Studio Code as my developer program on, on this machine. And we're gonna be utilizing that. So the first thing I need to do uh, on in your IDE is just to open up your folder, then obviously go to your project folder. So mine is here in uh, my site. So I select that folder. So this is my working directory. So what I should have in this folder is a, a folder called my site. Um, so I'm going to be needing that. And then we've got two other files. Um, but importantly, the manage py is there because we'll be utilizing that further. So uh, let's try and get to this point first. And we can now start developing. So the first task we need to build a new app and we're going to call that blog because we're building a blog application. So we need to use the command line again. Um, so I'm just going to close my server, press and control and C. And I can, I'm still in my site. So if I type in duh, I can still see that I'm in the area of my site, which has the manage.py because I'm going to need that to build a new app. So what I'm going to do is uh, utilize Python. Uh, and the manage.py uh, to start a new app. And I'm going to call that blog. So uh, let's run that. So that's going to start a new app. So you'll see by doing that, now I have a new folder called blog in my project. So that's where I need to be. Now I'm going to start developing this app. So the first task is for us to develop a, a small database for our blog app. So we're going to need to store posts. So we're going to make some posts and uh, we're then going to display those on the page. So all that data needs to be stored in a database. So with Django, we need to open up the project folder, which is the blog, that's our new project folder, um, or new app folder. And we need to access the models uh, file. So in here, Basically, we're going to develop a database within this file. So how we do this is by ext 
extending um, or subclassing um, an existing class in Django. And we're going to build a, a new class, which essentially is a new table in our database. So let's see that in, uh, in action. So I start off making a new class <coughs> and I'm going to call this post. So basically this is a new table called post. And like I said, like I said, class, uh, each model in Python, so this is a model I'm creating in Python, uh, <coughs> is a Python class um, that subclasses the Django.db.models.model. So, uh, models.model. Okay, so that basically sets up our, our new um, name of our table and now we need to think about the attributes so we're just asking ourselves what do we need to store about each post well I guess I'm going to need a title um, the URL for the um, for the individual post uh, who also when it was published um, or the published date um, who built the the post and the actual content i want to save the content in the database and the status so the status here is referring to the fact that when we build a new post we might want to just keep it in a draft until we're ready to finish it maybe we need to come back and finish it later and of course some posts are going to be published so i need a way of determining whether a post is published or not uh, to determine whether i should display it on the website Okay, so this is the finished view of my new table. Um, so just quickly going through this. So we created a new table called post and we um, decided on what we needed to store in our database. So I've gone ahead further. If you're familiar to databases, typically we needed to find a few parameters when we set out our new attributes in our table uh, or in our fields. Um, so we need to tell uh, we need to know what type of data is being stored in the field, in this case, a, a character field. Um, so we define this by using like the models dot and then the word char field. And then we need to find how long or how much data we want to store in this character field. And you can see that we do this for um, every uh, parameter here, apart from a few. So um, for example, the published date, um, what we're gonna do here is actually s store, we're gonna get the date from the system and then we're going to store the, the current date in this field. Now we do that by importing this uh, new utility. Um, so up here I've included a new utility called time zone. So basically this is going to be connected to this utility and when we add a new post it's going to uh, find the current date time and put it into this field. So that's that connected up. Now also the author so I need to know um, who published this post or we're going to store in our field who published this post. Now to do that, um, uh, Django has, when we make a new Django project, it has a default database uh, for users, uh, which we'll see once we start building uh, a super user and log into the admin area. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up to that or we're going to connect to that um, that model or to that table. And we're gonna collect the user, the current user or the user that's building the post. And we're gonna put the username into this field. We're gonna store the username into this field. So that's what this is doing here. It's a foreign key connected to an, another um, table that's uh, already pre-built by Django when we start a project. And it's just gonna extract the user and username and put it into this field. So we've got the content, which is a text field, and then we've got status. So here I'm going to build a, a drop down menu, uh, which enables me to decide um, if I'm using the admin area drop down menu, um, which allows me to decide whether um, <coughs> this uh, post is in draft or it's published. So you can see here what I've done is I've created a character field. I've utilized choices and I've linked to options options and I've made a few options in terms of um, whether this uh, post can be draft or published. 
So I could just add to that another line uh, in a similar kind of syntax. Maybe there's a third option that you want. So that's a, a simple um, <coughs> overview of building a table with Django. If you want to know a little bit more about some of the data types, you can, of course, go to the Django reference area and um, there be there is a whole page here on the different types of um, <coughs> data types you can utilize and the parameters that you might want to utilize. <coughs> so the next step is for now, the next step now is to uh, commit this to the project. So actually build these tables. So we do that uh, by utilizing the command prompt. The first step will be to uh, prepare um, these changes that we've just made. So I'm in the command prompt uh, in my site. So uh, this is the folder that includes manage.py. So I type in Python, uh, manage.py. And first of all, we're going to uh, prepare the changes that we've made. So make migration. So you'll notice that it says no changes de uh, detected because the first thing that we need to do is tell the uh, this new project that the fact that we've made this new application. So when we initially made this project, um, when we started this new project, Django built this new uh, folder called my site. So in here we have the settings file. So this is an important uh, file for the whole project. If I go into here, what I need to do is I need to tell the Django that I've created a new uh, app called blog. So I type in blog, comma, and then I go back to the command prompt and let's just run this uh, make migrations command again. I press up and you can now see that it's detected the uh, the database um, because I've now told it that this application exists. But you can see that there's a, a few problems here. So most of the time, uh, this is really useful uh, to help debug um, your code. Um, and it, sometimes some of the errors are a little bit strange. And you it might take for, for beginners, it could take a, a long time to, to decipher. But over time, uh, as you read this, uh, it becomes a lot clearer and easier to understand. So let's see what the problem is here. So there were a few problems with this code. So first of all, I missed out the S um, after model because uh, I'm importing models. And secondly, uh, what I've done to save a little bit of time, um, you watching me type code, I've copied and pasted some code in and Depending where you copy and paste it from, you have to be very careful with the, the formatting. Sometimes uh, the formatting isn't quite what's expected and it can be a bit perplexing in terms of uh, what it's asking you to do. So if I go back here, for example, um, at the top, the first problem, it was identifying that this default name was incorrect. Um, so invalid character in identifier. And all I've done, because I've copied and pasted this code over, I've just gone ahead and just uh, deleted this and typed it out again. So you can see here, then I run the Python manage.py make migrations again. I've got a load of stuff here, but here it says class post error is the name model is not defined. So I was able then to uh, go back into here and, see, and notice that the, the S is middle that is missing. So that happened. And then you can see I made run the code again, make migrations. And here this time it said uh, the model is not defined because I didn't save the page after I typed in the S. And then I run it again and you can see there was another error and there was, has no attribute char field. So again, this is one of the problems uh, because I've copied and pasted code again. So all I had to do there was uh, just write this out again. So I wrote those out again manually and then you can see that I've then made migrations again 
and it worked okay. So this has prepared the database um, now or this table. Um, so your output, the output you're trying to achieve is migrations for blog, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so if you have that, it means that you've made the migration, it's prepared on the table, and now we can commit to that table. So we do that by typing in uh, pythonmanage.py migrate. Okay, so that's applied all the changes that we've made. And in the background, now our, our table has been made and then we can move on to the next stage. I think what would be useful now is to actually see this table that we built. So we can do that by accessing the uh, Django admin area. Uh, so we access the admin area um, by first creating a super user. So again, I'm in the folder, my product folder with manage.py. So I type in Python, um, manage.py, and then I need to make a, a new user or super user or an admin user. So I create a super user. So that's going to take me through a set of um, steps. So the username, I'm just going to type in admin, the email, a.com, and then the password I'm going to use is admin. Um, obviously, that's not recommended on production sites, but this is just contained within my computer. And I need to accept the fact that um, I want to bypass that. So yes. And there we go. So I've created a super user. So what that means now is if I go into, um, well, first of all, I need to run the server. So let's just run the server so I can access the admin panel. So if you remember, it's uh, Python, Python, age.py, run server. So that should work okay. So notice now that we're not getting the, the um, migration uh, instructions here. Uh, so it's all working. So I'm going to go to my website. Uh, this is it right here. So I just refresh. Okay, so to get to the admin, I'm just going to type in slash slash admin on the end. That takes me to the admin panel. So I've just made a new user called admin and password is admin. So I can now log in. So I'm now in the Django administration area. Now, if you remember, I told you that by default, when you make a new Django project, there's some tables that are already built and users was one of them. Um, if you remember, we created a foreign key uh, I forget about this code. In our model, we created a um, a foreign key to the table um, user. So this is user. Inside of that, obviously, we've just made a new user. So we have the username. Um, so what we need to do next is now register our table um, so that it appears here in the administration area, so that we can manage the table, add new things to the table. Okay, so let's go back into <coughs> our project and we need to go to the admin.py. <coughs> so here we can register our models um, so that we can access them on the admin area. So we've got uh, import admin. Um, so what we need to do is type in from dot models. Okay, so we want to import our model called post and then we just need to register it on this on the admin site so we can we can see it uh, <coughs> post okay there we go so when we go back now to the admin area and press refresh we can now see our table appear <coughs> so uh, if I go into post you can see that there is nothing there at the moment but if I add a new post um, if you remember of course, if I go back to my model, uh, you can see that I've got title slug, published author, content status. So those are my fields. And you can see that that re represents here in the, with the drop down here. Um, so there we go. So here is the link, the author, if you remember, that's the foreign key to the uh, user table. And you can see here that there's a drop down that shows me all the users I can select. 
and we've got the published date area so I can define that if I need um, so that's uh, how to register your table onto the admin area where we can add some information let me go back home so what we've done here is we've added we created a new uh, table and we've then gone into the admin area of our blog and we've registered it so then it becomes available in the Django administration area. So let's go ahead and add some data into our, our post. post. Um, so I'm going to click on add and then give it a title. So new title. I'm going to leave the slug for now. Oh no, I'm going to call it new, the slug. And then the authors and then some content. And then the status is going to be published. So I'm going to save and add another. Okay, and now we've got a problem. So uh, it says here, um, post object has no attribute publish. So let's go back to the code and see what the problem is. So if I go back to models, um, okay, so this error allows me uh, to now go through the migration process again because to fix this I need to have in my database um, an attribute called publish so here we've defined or I've defined it as publish underscore date so I'm going to remove that and press save now I've made a change now to my model so I need to tell the Django that I've done that so I press control and C to get uh, to stop the server. I then go into uh, my command, make migrations. Should There should be one change. You can see that it tells me that there is a change. So I press yes. And now I need to um, migrate. So I actually commit to that change. There we go. So now let's just run the server again. So that brings back the server. So I can refresh this page. Oh, let's just go back to the admin again just to show how to get into that again. So slash admin, I'm already logged in. So let's build a, a new post again. So title is new, slug is going to be new, date, content, um, and this is going to be published. So let's see if this works. There we go. So now we successfully made a new post. Now, something that you can see here, the post, then it says post object one was added successively. Um, obviously that's not the name of the post. It's a bit of a random uh, thing to see. It doesn't really describe what we've just done. So if I go back to posts again, you can see it, it says post object one. So we need to uh, change this and uh, have a way of um, showing the post name for example that seems to be more appropriate than seeing post object one here to return uh, human readable uh, titles uh, for our post in the admin area here we've set up um, this string conversion to return uh, the title of the post <coughs> so if I go back into my admin area, you can see now when I refresh, um, I've now got the post name being displayed. So if I add a new post, call it uh, new to, new to author content and publish, <coughs> oh, just save. You can see now it's now displaying the titles and not uh, what we saw previously. So that's a handy uh, function to include. Now also what I want to do is to order this list <coughs> by default um, by published date. So I can do that um, by going back into my model and adding a little bit more code. 
So I set up a new class called Meta, and then we add our Meta data. So here we want to uh, define the ordering of that list, or the list of posts. So let's uh, order it by published date. So I select publish. So here I'm selecting uh, publish. So I'm ordering this list, or I'm going to order this list um, by uh, publish date. Um, so let's just see that in action. There we go. So um, you can see that this was published first, and then this post was published. Now, if I want to change that over and show um, what post was published last, for example, then I just need to basically uh, use the, the sign, the minus sign here, and that would change it uh, as such. So now um, what's at the top of this list is the post that were, the last post that was created uh, down to the first post and so on. So let's go ahead and <coughs> change some of the options within the admin panel. So uh, currently what we had um, was just title, but we do have control of what is displayed here. So we can add different attributes here to the admin panel to make it easy for us to find and navigate through um, our posts. So one of the more simplistic options we can change is what's actually appearing in this list. So if we go back into the admin area, I've made a few changes here. Uh, instead of importing um, the post model, um, I've just imported models and then I'm referring this, now I'm registering this model by utilizing models uh, dot post, the name of the uh, model, this model here. So I've also then extended that and added this new attribute author admin. And I made a new class called author admin. And you can see now I'm defining some metadata here, list display. So I've typed in title and slug. So if I also uh, type in author, so if I extend this and include author, um, these are the uh, list uh, titles to display um, within my admin page. So I've added author. And now if I refresh, you can see now author appears. So that's um, one of the many different ways that you can um, add um, different elements. If you search through again uh, the, the documentation, you'll find references to many different types of uh, metadata here that you can add um, to further enhance your admin area. Okay, so so far we've uh, we have built a new project. Uh, we've added an app called Block. And so far, the first thing we did, or yeah, the first thing we did was we built a, a nice uh, database or model, and then we obviously need to do um, apply that. So we applied that with uh, make migrations and migrate. And once we've done that, we then registered this post um, table uh, in the admin.py file. Now, um, don't forget that um, before we migrated, we needed to go into the settings of the My Site um, app, and we needed to add the new app that we built called Block. So we did that, and then we had a look at um, displaying or adding some metadata into the admin area. Um, first of all, obviously, we created a new user to get to the admin area, which was um, by typing in admin um, after the default URL. Um, so that took us into admin and we've added some posts um, to our database, to a table. So um, the next thing is for us to retrieve this data from the database and then to view it on the website. So before we go ahead and uh, build our web pages and display the information uh, from the database on our web pages and so on for our blog, let's just understand a little bit about what's happening here. So we've got our browser window. We type in the URL uh, to where we want to go. And 
that then basically sends a message to Django, a request, say. So what happens is that Django captures that request and it first of all looks for the URL that's associated to the URL that's been typed in. So that's really the first check and it needs that information then to direct the information, direct um, the request to the right place. So here in um, our project area, in our my site folder, we have the urls.py file and you can see that it says there's a path here and we've got admin slash. Now if you remember when we typed in um, at a slash admin here, um, that took us to the admin page. So basically that's controlling um, what's going to happen when someone types in uh, admin. And you can see that this is um, the instruction of what to do. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our blog app and then we're going to make a new file called urls urls.py and we're going to set up some urls associated to this blog app so what we're going to first do <coughs> in a while is basically add a new line of code here which is going to connect this url page uh, to this one here so not only will django look for here in here for urls associated to what someone's typed in it will now also look there so that's the first thing that we do so we also associate a URL to a view. So we have the URL in here and then we also define a view. So this view then, and this information will then go over to the view page, our view. So if we go back into the Django, we've got a view page or views.py. So in here, this is the glue really. Uh, I think it is the glue to the, um, <coughs> to this uh, model um, of working. Uh, so in the view, we're going to define um, what happens, um, but we need to collect a few things. So we need to collect a, a template um, to put the data on. So that's going to be our HTML and our CSS. And then obviously we're, we're going to need some data. So it's going to connect also to the model uh, and collect some data for us. So that, um, goes back uh, and basically gets all uh, put together in the view uh, and I like to think then that goes back to the browser and then we display all the information in the browser. So that's the general workflow of what you're going to do. You're going to create a URL, you're going to then build your view and then a template and if you need more um, tables uh, data in your model. So let's go back and now create a web page that shows all the posts from our database. Right, so let's start off by connecting up the URL file. So if I go into my site and open up URLs. So here basically what I want to do is connect this URL file to this URL file because I want to work predominantly in this um, this app that I'm building. So I want to contain all the artifacts and files within this app. So to manage that, the first thing uh, I need to do, like I said, is to link this up. So I'm going to be using an include. So let's just add that functionality first. Um, so I've added that functionality so I can use the include. Um, and now I need to add a new path to the uh, URLs in the blog. So um, I'll start off actually by typing blog here. Um, so to access the blog app, I need to type in blog first into my URLs. That makes sense uh, once we start ut utilizing it. And then I need to use the include because I want to actually include the, uh, the blog URLs. And then I'm just going to add something called a namespace. Go call that blog. Okay. So, so now what I've done is I've made a connection from this URL to this URL. So let's just uh, test to see if that is working. So just making sure that uh, the server is on. Uh, what's going on here? So there's an issue. App app name is not supported um, okay uh, so 
what's going on here we've got the the comma the path uh, blog slash include blog urls comma namespace equals blog okay so we've imported uh, the path and the urls and the include so there shouldn't be a problem there so next up then we're going to go to the uh, URLs in the my site and we're going to start off by uh, setting some of the dependencies so we need to import a path and then we will do in a minute okay, we're going to need to uh, connect this to the views that we're going to build so we import that and then we create an app name equals the same as the namespace blog okay so now we've done that oh, now we've done that um, how about that blog urls does not appear to have pattern in it okay so let's just uh, move on uh, because we need to also now it's complaining about we're not included the url pattern yet URL pattern equals and then there we go and there's probably one more complaint it's going to make I oh, know okay so now it's stopped complaining uh, we set up um, what we needed so we uh, first of all started off in the URL in the my site and basically we've just made a connection using an include uh, to the blogs URL which we built and then we've given it a namespace of blog and then come back here so we've added the app name blog and then we've set out the url patterns to now to be able to define some of the urls that we need right so let's just see what that looks like so if i now type in blog here you can see um it now tells me or it django now finds that there's two possible um urls that can be typed in here admin and blog so um, you can see that when I type that in um, there's there's nothing there because we've not set up anything yet um, so the next step let's start uh, building or creating a path to a page where we're going to display all of the uh, posts so this is going to be the the main area of the blog so we're going to be typing in um, at the moment blog and uh, that's going to take us to um, and show us a kind of a home page for the blog and we'll be able to access and see all of our blog entries all of our posts and what's going to happen we're going to click on those post entries and that's going to take us to the post individual page where we can read all about the post so uh, let's set out uh, and define our URL patterns first so I'm going to just close these uh, so I'm going to start off in the blog URLs and uh, we're going to define a, a new URL and notice that there's nothing here so this basically represents this space here um, the home page so you'll notice that I've connected it to a view called views.home and I've given it a name home page right so now what I need to do is connect this uh, URL view here to an actual view. So let's do that next. Let's start off by creating a, a, a simple view that's basically just going to return a template index. So here we've set up a, a simple view called home and we're going to take in a request and basically what's going to happen is we're going to return um, the template that's all that's going to happen here really um, the request this is a request object is used to generate um, the response um, so essentially what's happened here with render is that it combines the template and um, <coughs> the it yeah, basically returns the, the the template and anything that needs to happen on that template um, back to the user so now what we need to do is to build 
a template so it re can return this page called index.html. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky uh, because what we need to do is develop a template um, folder and then we need to tell to Django where that template folder is. So this can work differently on different operating systems and different setups. So I'm just going to uh, minimize my blog and my site folder. So I'm in the root directory of my, uh, my app and I'm basically just going to create a new folder I'm going to call that templates. So this is the default name uh, for the templates folder templates that Django is going to look for. So we're going to utilize that name. And then inside of that, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it index.html. And then I'll just quickly build this HTML file. So uh, in these examples, I'm going to be using a uh, bootstrap. So you can follow this if you've not used bootstrap before. So if you go to documentation, introduction, there's a quick start guide. There's a nice little starter template. I'm going to copy that and just put that in there. It's going to say hello world. So that just sets up my um, index.html page in my templates folder. So let's see if this works. Uh, if I go to my, um, if I go to my block, uh, I'm going to use the default page and there we go. So this is the HTML page that I just created. So confirm to confirm what's happening here, I'm typing in the URL. So obviously the URLs, sorry, I'm typing in the URL, that's sending a request to uh, the Django. Uh, apologies for this diagram. Um, so you've got the URL list. So a request is sent and it comes to this list here and you can see that it goes Sorry, this list here. It'll go through this list. Admin, no. Um, blog, yes, it makes a match blog. And you can see that um, we now include all the URLs from here. So you'll notice that the, the blank uh, refers to uh, no link. So let me just refer to what that means. If I type here, for example, um, home page. So I've gone from blank to home page. This is the URL in the blog um, app. If I change that, and go back here and refresh. You can see nothing's found, but what I do have is the option of home page now. And then that takes me then to my index page. So by just keeping it blank, it just means that um, it just refers to the, the blank space um, or this default uh, root page for slash blog. So um, that happened. And then basically this URL uh, is connected to a view. In this case, view is called home. We've imported the views here, so we connect this to the views page. So we go over to the views and you can see what we've done here is that we take the request and we're basically just returning um, this page called index.html. So to Django by default is looking for a folder called templates, which you built. And inside of there, we got a file called index.html and that's what's been served and what you're seeing here on the page. So now let's work out how to get information from our database and put it onto our page. So let's go back to our view. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these files. So um, if you remember the model, this is our model, original model. Um, so title slug, publish, author content status. We've been into the admin panel already and we've added some, we've got two posts now inside of our database, our table. And so we're gonna collect those up. So we're gonna take this and we're just doing it, gonna expand on this page, or sorry, on this um, view here, this home view. Um, so first of all, we're going to need to collect all the data in the database. So um, this, if you're familiar with databases, basically what I'm gonna do next is um, the equivalent of doing a SQL statement select all from table um yeah select all from table so select all the posts from table so um i need to make sure that this page can first of all access my uh, models so let's go to the top and add that so from 
uh, dot models. We're going to import uh, post. That was the name of our model. Yep, post. Okay, so that's all okay. Uh, so now I've got that, I can now access that model and run a simple query. So next up, uh, let's uh, set up a, a very simple query. So let's uh, access uh, all of the post information in the post model. Um, so maybe create a new variable called all posts um, and that's going to equal uh, the name of the model post objects uh, dot all. So like I said this is basically doing an SQL statement select all f select all from the post table. Okay and that's all now going to be stored in this variable called all posts. Right so next up um, we now need to basically uh, return this information onto the uh, the page or pass the variables across to the template to output them on the page. So to do that all we need to do is uh, just expand upon this return. Um, so request uh, we know it's going to be on the index page and now we just want to pass um, these uh, this new data across uh, to the template so we can render it out. So we're going to render it across as posts and obviously the data we want uh, to use is the data that's returned from from doing the, the S, doing the um, the request for the data. So <laughs> I'm trying to use different terminology here uh, or simpler terminology. So we, we collect all the data from a database um, in the post table and put it into this variable and then obviously all the data is in that variable and then we're going to pass it across to the template uh, referencing to it as posts. Right. So now what we need to do is actually go to our HTML page. So that's in our templates and now basically we need to um, render out that information um, from the from what's been collected from the database, and now it should uh, be able we know, should be able to now access our our posts in our database and display them on our template. Right then, so what we need to do here really is just make a for loop. Uh, so let's just uh, remove hello world for now from our HTML template and just build a simple for loop. So for posts, in posts, uh, remember um, that we're passing across posts, all the data is in posts. Um, so while there is um, data in posts, we're going to do something. And basically, we're going to output um, posts. Oh, post, because it's been passed to, so post, been passed to post, so post. Uh, uh, dot and then what we need to do now is um, ask ourselves what we want to be displayed. So here we've got option we can display the title, slug, publish, author, content, status. So remember that we've made a query to basically collect all of this information for every single post that we built. Now what we can do is we can access this individually um, by reference to its name. So for example um, I first of all I want to just display the title so I just display the title here and then just for the sake of demonstration I'm just going to make a break like HTML break and then I'm going to then display the author so that should show the the author name okay so now what we should see on the screen I'll put a break there I'll put two breaks there um, so what we should see now is every single post that we have in our database, the title and the author. So let's see if that works. So if I go over here, press refresh, and you can see this happens here. So the reason why that is, is because um, one, I haven't finished uh, this 
probably. Okay, and also I need to end this loop. So uh, end for. I was just getting too excited there. Uh, so end for. Uh, so we've started and ended the loop, and we got the information right there. So let's see if that works. There we go. So you can see I've got new to and admin, and new to and new title and admin. So if you remember, if I go back into my admin panel slash admin, um, I've got two posts here, new to and new title. And notice that it is being outputted in the same way because we've asked or we've defined the metadata. If I go back into the model here, if I change this again, this default ordering to publish um, and then go back, to my page you can see it now outputs differently uh, from my first to the last um, post that I've made um, or if if I want to I can output it based upon published date in terms of the newest one first there we go so this has a, a big effect and you can start to see now that what we can do is add more metadata and information in this model area uh, to better con control directly uh, what's happening so it, it saves us ultimately writing more script in the view um, to control um, how we want to manage the data so we can write more um, code here to control the data before we get to the view um, it just means less information or less um, code we need to write in this view area um, so that's a simple example let's just add a new post just to show you uh, what's going on um, author comment status published and save so I've just added this new post you can see now it's it's on my page so I'm going to quickly just tidy this page up utilizing uh, a little bit more of uh, bootstrap I'm just going to build this page so uh, we have a nice little nav bar and these elements here are just going to be lined up on top of each other. The idea is that this is the home page. If we're interested in something in a new post, we're going to click on it and that's going to take us to that the individual page for that post, which we'll sort out shortly. But let's just, like I said, let's just tidy this up slightly. So I'll go to the documentation uh, components. I'm going to need some sort of nav bar. So I'll select nav bar. I'm going to just utilize this uh, simple nav bar here. So I'm going to go back into my index page um, just create a nice little nav bar there. Um, I don't need some of these things. I'm going to go quite quickly. So I'm going to get rid of this form. Uh, I don't need the disabled link. I don't need the drop down. Uh, so I'll get rid of that. And then I'm just going to leave myself with something called link and then the home page. So I'm just going to type in HTTP slash 127.0.0.0 one colon uh, colon eight thousand so that's my home page um so that's a nice little nav bar that i've just made uh so we we'll just quickly see that there we go i'm going to make it dark so i'm just going to change the light to dark yeah Okay, so that's my nav bar. Now it should look dark. Good. I'm just going to rename the page to uh, blog. Okay, um, so that's that. So now all I need to do is just make a <coughs> an entry for, for these here so I can um, put them on top of each other. So let's just follow this piece of code. I've pre-written it for you. Uh, so we've got a container here. So this is a bootstrap container. This is basically going to provide um, a, a div that is around about 1,200 wide. So um, that's a bit too wide for me. So I've basically created a new uh, div with uh, and a new row, and I've justified the content in the middle. So this is where I need to start my loop because for every time I want to print out a new post, I want to put it into a div, uh, col md4. Uh, so column is using four columns. Um, and that's basically just going to loop through 
every time there's an item in the database. So um, that's going to produce a list that looks like that. So if you wanted, if you wanted things lined up in that manner, then that'd be a good way of doing it. Um, but of course, that might not be something that's desirable. As I keep saying, we want it on top of each other. So uh, if I just remove this, uh, this element here and put it outside of the divs. So um, instead of having that within the loop, I just take this, this out of the loop. Uh, let's just see what's happened there. There we go. So now they're on top of each other. So um, if you wanted to, because at the moment, if we uh, inspect this, you can see uh, let's just, uh, let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, just set up a screen size. Or a normal HD screen. Um, so that's what it's going to look like on your screen. I just wanted to show you that uh, what we've done here, this is the container. So as I said, it's uh, 1,140 wide. And that is basically too big. I wanted a, a smaller, a thinner uh, row or column, sorry. Um, so we've utilized a row. We've justified the content in the center. And then we've created this column MD4. So basically, this is a new div that's been uh, centered and um, the size is four. So if you wanted to change that size, I just wanted to point out really, you can just change that number here. So eight, that's going to provide a, a much wider um, column there. So that's a, just a simple way of creating a, a centered uh, column uh, using Bootstrap. Uh, if I go back to responsive, you can see how this is going to work in a mobile view. So um, just like that. So it will work both on the desktop and in mobile. OK. So let's just tidy this up slightly. Um, now, I want to get rid of these BRs now. Um, so... I want to output the uh, the post title first, and so I'm going to put that in there. Um, I want it to stretch the whole the width of the column, so class equals uh, col twelve. Um, so that's going to output that. And I'm just going to copy and paste that. So on a new row, new line. Um, now the author is going to be displayed, but of course I don't want author. I want the contents. So I add that to that there. So basically there's just going to be two rows, um, full width of the row, um, with title and contents. So let's see that. Okay, so notice that the contents isn't outputting. Uh, if I I think I've referred to it as content. Yeah, not contents. So now I should have some contents. There we go. So I just want to now just use a little bit of uh, HTML. We're going to put these in the H1 tag. Um, okay. And then I put this into a, a P tag. Uh, Okay, there we go. So we've got a paragraph and a heading. So now that looks like that. So that's closer to where we want to be. The next step is for us to now click on these items and take us to that individual post page. The first problem I think that needs solving here is, is this, for example. Let's go over to the admin panel and go to my post, select a post, um, publish status is draft. I'll save that. So this should be a draft now. Um, now it'd be nice if I had a nice list here of what is draft and what isn't draft. 
so let's go back into my code, do that first. Um, status. So if I go into the blog app and go to my admin, um, here I am going to add title and then status. So that's in my admin area. So hopefully now, if I refresh, it tells me the status. So draft. So if I go back here, you can see that even though it's draft, it's been um, outputted to my screen because going back to my view, I'm selecting all posts at the moment. So I need a way of filtering out um, all the posts so that only the posts that are published are displayed on the web page. So I could create a filter here, for example, uh, extend this and create a filter, or else um, I could um, deal with it within the model. So there's, there's two ways that this can be uh, completed here. Um, probably the, the best option is to deal with it within the uh, the model. So let's have a look at how we can achieve that. So the default way of um, creating queries, uh, or querying the model, collecting the data, is utilizing the, the objects. Utilizing the objects. This is a default manager, a models manager. So what we can do is, well, we can build, build our own custom manager. Uh, so if I go into models, uh, let's create a new class at the top here. And we're going to call this new, new manager. And then we're using models, extending from models manager. Okay, so um, what we need to do now is uh, create a kind of a custom query set. Uh, yeah, query set self. So to use in this class, and then we want to return. So what do we want to return? <coughs> so um, query set, and then we want to create a filter. Filter uh, status. Now, yeah, status equals published. Okay, so here we are. So this is a, 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 a custom manager here. So uh, let's uh, just remember um, that uh, the objects, we used objects before, and that was a default manager. And now we've got this custom manager, which we've called new manager. So uh, I've just, um, to utilize new manager, we call it by uh, call it by new manager or lowercase. So now that we've done that, we can now go into the, the view and we can utilize this new manager. What it's gonna do, uh, similar to here, for example, the default output uh, ordering is gonna be from the, the newest post first to the oldest post. Here, what we've done is instead of having to every time collect information and tell it sp specifically, specifically that we have to filter it for um, published, then instead of having to do that function every time, we're just going to by default always um, utilizing this new custom manager. It, we're going to by default um, bring back data that that is already filtered out. Um, 
the posts that are published. So we're never going to return posts that aren't published or in draft as we referred to it. So going back into our view, we now need to basically just stop using objects. And now what we're going to be utilizing is new manager. So, um, so if I now type in here, new manager, uh, obviously what's happening now is we're just still doing select all from the table. Um, but it's doing the filter here, um, only going to pull back, um, or is only going to collect posts from a database and that have been flagged as published and not draft. So let's hopefully now, uh, if you remember, this is draft. So if I refresh this page, <coughs> you can see it's broken. Right. So let's have a look to see what's broken. What have we done wrong? Um, name error model. Oh, okay. So it's models. Oh, no. Uh, models. Yes. Okay. Um, there we go. Just a little typo there. Uh, so now that's working. So refresh the page again. And now we've got another problem. So type object post has no attribute new manager. Okay. So let's go back into here. Um, well, it's right here. So let's just type that out again. New manager. Uh, new manager. New manager. So that's connected. Um, let's try that again. <coughs> no. Okay. So type object post has no attribute. Type object post has new. Okay. Okay. So it's just another typo. Man. Manager. Uh, I think it's just a, a small typo. There we go. Uh, so now refresh the page and there we go. So you can now see that it's only going to pull back from the database those posts that are published. Excellent. OK, so let's now tackle the um, the task of making these into links so that then they go to the individual page for that particular post. Right, so uh, we're going to need to create a new URL for this. Uh, so, for example, we want to capture um, the URL uh, when someone types in the name of, for example, the post up here. So there we go. Uh, so that should take us to the post new too. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So in order for us to do that, let's go into our code and we're going to start off with the URLs. Right. So here, what's going to happen is that, um, make a nice little drawing for you. Uh, what's going to happen here is that in, in our browser, we're going to type in blog, blah, 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 slash. And then what we can have is, uh, a, a value, for example, new one, and that's the name of the post. So going back here, what do I mean by the name of the post? What's going to happen is that remember we um, defined a slug um, for this post. Uh, so going back into the admin area, um, this slug is called new two. So the idea is that I can type in new two there and that's going to take me to this post, um, the new two post. That's the idea of this. So. Let's first uh, go into the URLs. So this is the URLs for the uh, for the blog. And now let's just create a, a new URL to uh, enable us to kind of capture that information. So here, 
here we're going to, um, we've got path as per normal and we're going to, we're going to capture that information. So slug post and we're going to take that information and pass it over to view dot post single. Okay, so now we need to make a, a new post, a, a new model uh, of view, sorry, <laughs> called uh, post single. So let's go off uh, into the view and create a new view. Um, so we called that post uh, single and this is we're going to take the request and also uh, a new value post okay so this value here represents um, going back to my URLs this value here so essentially what's happening here uh, is I'm going to type the value that's a value so imagine it's a new two so new two this is being sent off this request is being sent off to Django. It reads this new to. It then um, it reads the, the new to and then passes that information to the view um, and captures it right here. So what we typed in new to, that's going to be stored right there. So we can now utilize this um, to get the information we need. So essentially what we're going to do now is uh, utilize this information to make a query. So in SQL terms, um, a query that we're going to make is select all from post model, the table post. So select all from post um, where um, slug equals whatever is in here. So if I type in new two, that's going to be stored into here. So the post is going to equal new two. So essentially what I'm going to do now is say um, select all from the model or the table post where slug equals new two. So that's essentially what I want to now build um, as a kind of query to the database. So first of all, I'm going to import a new function. Uh, that's the get object or 404. So I press uh, comma there. So this is basically uh, uh, going to be utilized if um, the object doesn't exist. Um, the web page is going to return a 404. So we're going to now say post uh, post equals. So create a new variable post equals, um, and then we're going to create our new um, query essentially. Um, so we need to use the post model and we're going to say that slug equals post. So by this, we mean this here. So this is going to be storing, if you remember, we we're saying new two. So that's going to now um, say new two. That's a slug equals new two. So basically I'm saying select from the database post where post uh, equals slug um in this case, new two. And then um, because I'm using the object manager here, um, I need to make a filter so that the um, filter out the published, or oh, just gonna do it this way. Um, so published, so this is a, another way of kind of filtering out published or not. So there we go, that's the call that I'm gonna make to my, um, my model, to uh, my database. Um, basically select um, the post model, um, find um, a entry where slug equals, in this case, whatever I type in there, new two, and then basically filter out um, those returned, those that match, um, and just ensure that the status equals published. So if I do find it and the status equals published, nothing is gonna be returned. So, um, in some respects, this is just a, a check. Okay, um, let's now uh, return. So we're gonna return all this, um, render. 
put it all together and the request. Uh, and then we're going to create a new page called uh, single.html. So that's going to display the single post page. And uh, we're going to put all that information into post. So we can access the information and past past the um, the returned information. So the returned data from the database is going to be in this variable. It's going to be then passed uh, into our render, so we can access the information and um, output it on the screen. Okay, so we enter uh, new two into our URL. Apologies for repeating myself, but then this is captured right here, slug post. And then this goes off to our view. We can then capture that um, information. So that would say new two. Now what we do is then do a query. Uh, so we query the post um, data in the post table um, with um, slug equals post. So that's going to equal new two and status needs to be published. And then we're basically just going to render it out. So this should return back one item from the database. All the data is going to be stored into post there. And then we can access that by passing that information over to our single.html template that we're just about to build. Um, and we can now output all the information. So let's just uh, now see that in action by creating a new page called single.html. So I'm in blog. I've got my templates folder. I think earlier I told you to make templates folder inside of the uh, main directory. Uh, so my template is folder is inside blog. Uh, I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to call that single.html. Now I could start utilizing the template systems in the Django, but I'm just going to copy and paste uh, for speed uh, the index page and then just uh, get rid of um, everything apart from the body. There we go. So just a, a simple boilerplate for HTML. So that's my single page. Um, next up, we need to now output uh, the information onto the page. So it's just a case of working out what I want to output on the page. So I want to access uh, the title and the, uh, the content in this case content so if you remember this data has been collected from the database for this individual post and now I can access it through uh, the data through post and I go back to my template so I'm saying uh, look into that data for uh, this data the post and the title so that should be printed on the page for now I'm just going to make that into a break um, HTML break so let's see if that works so I'm going to type in new to because I know that is a um, an item in my database. Press enter and the connection refused. So what we've got here, line 12 in views. Line 12 uh, in the view. So post, oh, okay. So I've forgotten my colon. So there we go. So how about that? I save that. I should update. Okay, so that's updated and it's okay. So I refresh and you can see it's working. So I've typed in new to after the blog and you can see that that data, as I keep saying, it's been passed over to here, it's collecting that information, collecting new to, the word new to, that's then being passed over to my view and then it's been utilized here in this query. Um, and that query is obviously returning that post, that individual post. All data is being stored into post. And then we pass it over to um, our template, single, where we can now access it through post dot and title content or any other information we want to collect uh, from our table or individual single page. So um, that works absolutely fine. But obviously, probably what we need to do now, if I go back to my uh, index page, um, let's just very quickly go to my index page. 
take my navigation bar. I'm just going to change this where it says link to, uh, I don't need to change that for now. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this nav onto single. Again, I realize uh, this can be done differently utilizing the Django templating system. Um, so I've got single. Um, so let's just go back to uh, me too. No, that doesn't exist. Is it lower? There we go. Um, so this takes me to this individual post and now I can go back home. Uh, not typed in the right URL because home isn't uh, just that, is it? It's a slash blog in this case. That's kind of my home page. Okay. refresh that there we go okay so now we need to link these uh, instead of actually typing it in here new to etc we need to make these into links that's going to link us to um, the, in, the individual posts so in order to develop uh, the links the individual links for individual posts we're going to be utilizing the reverse function uh, which will give us the URL of the page so we're going to do this in the model uh, first of all, we need to import the functionality, uh, import reverse, and then down here you can see that I've added two lines of code. Um, so I'm going to call this a function uh, get absolute URL, and it's basically when I call this function, it's going to get the um, the blog uh, title, sorry, the the slug, excuse me, it, it's going to get the uh, slug information, and then it's going to return that information that's stored in slug in this case. So um, let's see that in action. If I now uh, go to my uh, HTML page, I'm, I built a, a very simple link here, uh, URL link and a post dot, and then I call the, uh, the new function. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna be replaced by the, the URL of the individual um, post. Uh, so on the index page, remember that this is the loop that's going to loop out every single post that is published. Um, and within this loop now, we've added this link to also include um, the actual URL uh, to this individual page. So let's go back. Um, and there we go. So you can see that when I hover over this at the bottom left hand corner there, it says where the link is going to be. Uh, and so this is going to take me to new two and this is going to take me to new. So what does that mean? Um, so if I were to make a new post, uh, well, let's just uh, make this published. So this is the, the slug uh, name. Um, and I'm going to change that to published, press save. So obviously now if I refresh the homepage, I should have a new post, yep, because it's now published. And you can see this link refers to that uh, that URL down there. That takes me to the individual pages. So there we go. We now have functionality that we've got a homepage here for blog, which is gonna show all the um, post entries that we built that's stored in the database. And now we have a link to the individual, these individual pages there we go. So that would be an individual page. Uh, so from here, um, I can pretty much put the same code um, as I have done from the index in terms of lining things up. So I'm just going to copy paste this uh, div container uh, right into my single. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this content and put it right there. Um, and I don't need the link for this single page. I just want the title and the content. So that's now going to give me, it's going to give me that, uh, which isn't working. So the reason why that isn't working is because, let's have a look at the view. We're sending across post, single, post.title, post.content. Um, oh, we, we don't need, we don't need the loop here. Um, this is on the single page, so we don't need that loop. 
there's just one item that's being returned. And there it goes, we've got the title and the content. So I've gone ahead and just tidied up my database to include uh, some Lauren Ipsen here uh, to help me shape what this design is going to look like. Uh, so I've got title, I've changed the slug to post one, two, and three, and some content. So I've done that to all my posts and I've gone back to my home page and you can see that it's looking like this. So I'm going to make this into um, the link now so people can just click on the title. So if I go back into index, uh, instead of uh, instead of having the link there, I'm just going to get rid of that, and I'm going to make this post title uh, name into the link. So I'm going to remove that there and just paste it over the link. So the name of the uh, post is now the link. So if I go back, you can see now that. There we go. So I can access the individual posts in that manner now. So one of the problems here, you can see that on my home page, there's way too much text. So I'm going to need a way of filtering out that uh, to kind of limit how much text is shown. Now I can do this in two ways. Um, I could, for example, change my database to include an excerpt. So an excerpt is just going to be utilized on pages like this. Uh, to give the viewer an understanding of what they're about to read. Or I can actually limit the output of this here. So I think in this instance, I'm going to show you and we're going to update the model. So let's do that. So let's go into the model and let's add a new uh, field here called uh, X. Oh, let's just call it... Um, Let's do WordPressy. Had a thought. No, we're just going to stick to the excerpt. Um, and so we're just going to make a new field. So um, we can use a, a character field um, or, for example, a text field. Um, so let's use a text field for now. Um, so now we change the model. As you might imagine, we now need to just Close that server down, control and C, and we need to just to update. So, okay, it's not that. Right, so we need to uh, run the migration again. Uh, so make migration, oh, S. And now we've got this problem here. So you're trying to add a non-nullable field excerpt to post without a default. So because there's information in the database already, it's not so straightforward potentially um, when you want to add a, a new field into your database. So to overcome this, we can provide a one-off default value now so that all existing rows will have that value. So we can do that. So let's press number one and we can type in some things here. Alternatively, uh, what we can do is we can uh, add some information into our model. So there is a few options here. We could just delete the database, save data, delete the database, and then um, recreate the database and add the data back in. That's one way of doing things. Um, uh, we could also, um, just add some a new attribute. So here, for example, um, I've added null equals true. So let's just see if that works. So we just exit that, and we can quit. No, Control C, um, and then let's do make uh, migrations again. You can see now it's going to allow me to uh, change the field, and I migrate. There we go. So what we should now have in our database, um, if I go to post, obviously I need to start the, the server. Um, if I go to one of my posts, I should have the option now of um, creating an excerpt. So um, just a, a short few words about the post. 
So there we go. So I'm going to save that. I need to do that on all three of them. So I've applied that on all three posts. So if I go now back to my home page and refresh, I've still got this long uh, piece of text, which is the content, which I want to see on the individual page, but not on the home page. So I just need to now go back and remember it's the excerpt uh, information. So um, let's go into the index page and all we need to do is really change the content to the excerpt. Okay, so um, now it should just be pulling out that and there we go. Obviously this could be slightly longer. So that kind of clears that up. So we can now uh, go into our individual post page. We can see that. Now you're probably thinking, well, this isn't very tidy. Um, how can I change that? Well, at the moment, there's no quick, easy fix to that um, other than maybe typing in uh, HTML into the input. So, for example, if I go to that post um, in order to kind of make some sort of separation, I need to type in HTML in here. Um, so we could add some modules onto this so it does it automatically for us. Um, or a little bit more fluid than actually just typing this all in. Uh, that's quite what well, can be quite a difficult activity and it's out of the scope of this uh, project. So I'm just going to type in all my P tags for all my paragraphs just to show that is um, working. Um, and refresh the page. Oh, was it that one? Yep. Oh, it's not. Okay. So you can see that um, the P's are being outputted here. Um, they're not being outputted as HTML. Uh, so let me just double check I've added all the P's I needed to. Yep. Um, so the question is, well, why is that? Why is that happening? And how can I, how can I change that? Well, that's fairly simple. If I uh, go into um, the code, find where um, it's outputting the content and you can see that I've included this bar safe and that's basically then going to um, format the HTML as HTML and you can see that on the page now I have a nice set of paragraphs on the page. So let's just do a little bit of tidying up here. Uh, I want to do with, I want some padding at the top here. Um, so I'm going to go to single. Uh, add some padding right here um, so oh, some padding top uh, I'm just going to add five it's just using the bootstrap padding option there we go so that adds a bit of padding there. that's nicely done um, let's just check to make sure that yeah it's uh, compatible with desktop and mobile there we go and I go back home so let's just get rid of these links so so I'm uh, just going into index and changes to I think it's text dark um, yep okay so that's uh, text changed uh, from the blue to the black and we add a little bit of a padding uh, on that as well. Padding top five. There we go. So now we have a functional blog. I should really get rid of that link actually. Last thing I do is remove that link from there and from the single or move from there too so now i've done that there we go so we've got home page we've got blog pages individual pages wonderful um obviously we've got um the background or the admin side uh ready to continue creating posts and this really um ends 
this development for this very simple blog um, application. So one thing that we can um, have a quick look at is the the Django template system uh, inheriting uh, different parts of a template so that we don't have to keep copy and pasting things on the same page. So let's start off making a new template. We're going to call this template base.html. So all the other templates are going to utilize this base. Um, so on this base template, I'm going to need um, I'm going to need all the uh, body elements, top and bottom. Oh, I can cut that. That's not a problem. And put that there. So this is going to be my my base. Um, HTML. And what I want to do is to utilize this base in each of my pages um, um, and basically inject my code into this section here for single and index. So what I need to do is uh, first of all utilize um, extend. So let's make, uh, let's get this extending. Uh, no, it's not my base. Apologies. Uh, this is my base. So I don't want to do that there. So on my index, I'm just going to get rid of, and I have already, or oh, actually I want to put the navigation on my base as well, because that's going to be on every page, isn't it? So I just put that there. So that's my base file. So in my index page now, all I have is uh, really the functionality uh, to display the individual posts on this index page. So um, what I need to do first then is um, get this to hook up link up with the base file so i'm going to say extends um, and tell it what i want to extend so the base.html in this case and then i finish that okay so we're going to have it extending and now i need to define some blocks because the question is now how do i get that into um, my base in the middle right here basically where it needs to go so what I can do is create a new um, block here first so um, I want to call this uh, a block uh, I'm going to call this content so this block is going to be called content wonderful and I then uh, end end this block so we know where it starts and ends uh, end block okay so that's a, a block there called content so what I can do now is refer to that content block in my index page so I extend um, so I'm, I say what I want I say what base template I want to use and now I need to uh, include my uh, block for the content so block content um, finish that off and basically I just need to uh, tell I just need to end this block um, so yeah, so we're going to end end this block. Excuse me. And block. <coughs> okay, so the block starts here and the block ends there. So what's going to happen is we're going to extend from the base. So we're going to utilize all this information. And then basically where this block starts and ends, this is going to be replaced with the information that's inside this block content here. So by default, this base is going to show nothing inside of here, but we're going to, because we're calling it, we're going to overwrite it and we're going to put this information inside of it. That's the idea. So let's just see if that works. So let's go to my blog page. I'm going to go to my home. I refresh and just make sure my server is running. Yep. Okay. There we go. So let's just see if that's actually working. Um, 
by going to my base and just type in something random right there and press refresh and you can see it's appeared right there so you can see that this is working perfectly so you can see the advantage of this in that I've got one base file so I don't need to cop keep copying about copying and pasting in this nav because uh, on the index page all I need to do is define what's inside um, the block content so what I can do now is the same thing on single so I can get rid of everything in this single page apart from uh, the actual functionality that I need again it's going to extend from base and then I'm going to end this block right here uh, okay so I've uh, ended the block so that should now be replaced uh, or replacing uh, what's here uh, but keep everything else so let's just see that in action and there we go so that's a, a simple overview there of template inheritance um, that you can utilize now one thing um, that might be of interest is obviously the title the title of this page um, needs to be different on each page so every time you go to a different single page the title of the page what is displayed um, up here for example uh, also needs to be different based upon the um, different content of each post so we can do that again by utilizing this template uh, inheritance system so what we need to do is go back into our base now obviously uh, that's the default information right there so let's just make a new block so again we're just going to call this a uh, this is just going to be a block and then we give the block a name uh, title for example and then we can uh, just end the block there we go and then we can just type or put inside what we want there we go and so in actual fact um, instead of doing that we can just do that because it's only the name um, that we want to replace not the whole thing so uh, the default is going to be nothing at all so there's nothing at all by default in the title in the base so what we need to do now is go into index remember it's called block title so here actually if I just uh, copy this into my index at the top or anywhere really uh, now I'm going to replace it with what I want in the entry so this is the index page so this is just going to say uh, welcome welcome to blog there we go so let's just see that in action there we go welcome to blog and in the single page obviously this is going to be slightly different because what we want now is the name of the individual page so in here I'm just basically going to utilize the title there we go so the title is going to be displayed now in that block area so when I go to an individual page it's now going to appear up here there we go okay so that finishes this small project of building a very simple blog if you've got any questions then please leave it in the comments